All right, it was Movember, day 13, I think. I can never remember these things. It's all a blur. Um, Mo's coming along, um, doing stuff each day. Um, today was, uh, the, this evening, around a Breaking Free group, and we focused a lot on reality and Step 6, a fantastic group. But I read, um, <clears throat> I read this uh, a chapter out tonight just around the beliefs that we need for recovery when, essentially, you know, we come into recovery with a lot of distorted uh, cognitive distortions and, you know, distorted thinking, impaired thinking. If you go back to that uh, download I did on the cycle of addiction, there's a lot of impaired thinking, a lot of fantasy that triggers euphoric recall that's less than nurturing for us, um, continues that abandonment um, of self, you know, so... Um, in the book, and I refer this book a bit, but I like it a lot as a resource, it's uh, Facing Addiction by um, Patrick Carnes, Stephanie Carnes, and John Bailey. It's just an awesome book if you're new in recovery. Now, I'm a 12-step fan and believe that, um, that attendance of those meetings and fellowships are essential. But this book is nearly like doing a step zero on yourself if you're in a pre-contemplative stage of change. One of my downloads, I'll do a stages of change. Um, but in this, he refers to the fact that once you've established and sort of broke through delusion and you understand, you know, really clearly the nature of addiction and you've done a first step on the problem. So you go, OK, I'm I'm I've got a problem here. I need to deal with this. He basically, he's basically saying, look, we've come from an experience of avoiding reality at all costs to now having to embrace reality at all costs. And that's going to seem crazy. Because the, the, the strongest neuropathways are the ones that are hardwired towards escaping. So he, he refers to, um, the authors refer to the literature of Stephen Covey, who wrote The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, about this idea of um, first order change and second order change. And just in a nutshell, first order change is I'm still at the helm. And, you know, one of the, and this will be a swearing warning, so if you're really offended by swearing, but but uh, I'm going to say the F word, and, and it's quoting Russell Brand. If you look at his book around the first two steps, he's saying, can you admit that you're a little bit fucked about something? And can you then admit that I can't unfuck myself? You know, that largely we need then to get the help of others. Now, if you've got developmental trauma, trusting anybody usually takes just absolute humiliation and degradation and isolation for us to go, you know what, I may as well because I've got nothing to lose. Well, they talk here about, <coughs> excuse me, second order change being that I need to identify that. I need to identify that I literally can't do this on my own, that I literally need to pull upon the resources of other people that I've trusted to the best of my ability. It mightn't be an easy thing to come, uh, to, to come up against. And he goes over that. I was sort of searching for it in the book. I probably won't go over that. I want to keep it simple. So tonight, the provisional beliefs are... He says here, these beliefs are an act of trust held until your recovery process becomes stronger. Provisional, uh, provisionally embracing the truths below will help you through the challenge that comes with starting change. They will help you as you begin to repair the damage caused by your addictive behaviors. Now, this isn't just for someone starting out, never walk through a 12-step meeting. Uh, I know it in my recovery. I have struggled enormously with uh, sex, food, um, uh, money, work addiction, um, busyness addiction, and yet I'm 31 years clean and uh, in the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. So you would think, oh, well, I should really, this should be easy. But embracing any new change, we, we, we will be uh, faced with that wanting to hang on to it, throw in, the co you know, throw in the towel and hang on to the corner, as they say. So critical provisional beliefs to embrace recovery. One, for the time being, you may not be able to trust your own perceptions. You will have to trust the perceptions of others, even as mistaken and as, and as unpleasant as you believe them to be. Whenever you've got strong neuropathways in one direction, as Pia Melody says in Breaking Free, when you finally start to act in your own best interest, your hard wiring tells you that you'll feel awful, you'll feel shameful, and you'll feel as though you're doing something wrong. It feels normal to be in the disease, and it feels diseased to be acting in a way that is taking care of your own best interests. So it will be unpleasant sometimes. It will feel even mistaken, the advice and suggestions we can get from others. For the time being, you'll have to trust that you have been damaged far more than you know. But 
That time and recovery works wonders in repairing the damage and in helping you become the person you're meant to be. Three, for the time being, you must remember that addiction of any form, escaping reality of any form, is a form of insanity in which you are deluded about reality. You need to believe that you must pursue reality at all costs. The only way out of this insanity is to tell those who are helping you all that has happened. They cannot support, they, they, sorry, they can support you in reclaiming reality. You must do this without minimizing or omitting awkward details. And you may not make private deals with yourself about holding things back. Anything less than full disclosure lowers the probability of recovery. So often, and I've know, I know this very personally myself, I don't want to admit to awkward details. I don't want to let or, or reach out to people that can really help me. And, and I'm humbled by this all the time in my recovery. I have to do this stuff regularly. We're as sick as our secrets. And not the big secrets that happened when we were young, but the secrets I keep now, the awkward details, the stuff I need to take a risk and reach out and trust people. And believe me, when you've got developmental trauma, that stuff feels life-threatening, not necessarily consciously, but unconsciously. It feels like your life will be under enormous threat. That's why we don't do it. It's not just because we want to keep a secret. It just feels that somehow there's this implicit sense of dread that's involved with that. But I like how they say, because you can never tell someone you'll use or everything will be a disaster if you don't do it. But they just make the point that anything less than full disclosure lowers the probability um, of your recovery and certainly the quality of it. In step one, in the 12 by 12 of AA, they talk about the, the, um, the need for um, alcoholics to um, uh, experience, to, to understand and accept their devastating weakness and all its consequences. And I think that's what they're saying here. Is like you know we can know our devastating weakness, but I don't want to extend. I don't want to extend to all of the consequences. And the consequence here is that I'm as sick as my secrets. And if I don't admit these awkward details to someone, it, that lowers the probability of my recovery. In their literature, they say of real happiness will find none. Our recovery will be sobriety will be precarious, but of real happiness will find none. And they just really hammer home the point by saying it's one of the sort of known facts of AA life, you know. So, <clears throat> something to be really, you know, take stock on, do a step 10 on, do a step 11 on, and reach out for help. The last one is, for the time being, you must allow people to take care of you, even if you do not feel that you deserve anyone's love and care. And that can be really tough, you know, we want to beat ourselves up. You are important, valued, and appreciated in ways that are hard to accept right now. And this means you must follow through on what is being asked of you. What's being asked of us? To surrender control of our life to those who could care for us better than you can care for yourself at this time. Now, I know that's a challenge. And I'm not saying, you know, I like that saying, it's got, if it's going to be practical if it's going to be spiritual too. It's got to be practical. It might be awkward, but it's not insane. I know that's a challenging thing. I'm not saying give up your sovereignty. I'm not saying give up the way you create yourself. I'm not saying give up your individuality. But the point is this. If you have got rituals, embodied rituals, neuropathways, cognitions, emotional sort of content and, and compulsion to act on all of that, that is self-defeating to the point of insanity, then I need to attach my beliefs to a, a provisional set of beliefs for a period of time. And for the people that you hear that get that their start up in recovery, they largely put this into action. In 12-step culture, it's they do 90 meetings in 90 days. They get a sponsor. They start getting phone numbers. They make outreach calls. They buy the book. They start reading it. They start journaling. They do the just for today readings in the morning. They do a step 10 at night. And they have an active relationship with their sponsor where they talk about the awkward details. They do service. They start helping others. One addict, an addict a day clean can help a newcomer. So it's not giving up our sovereignty. It's just attaching ourselves for the time being until we can construct those beliefs that hold us ourselves. <coughs> and one of the valuable things about being available and keeping what we have by giving it away is that once I've constructed those beliefs, I can really support someone with deep empathy that comes through the door that needs to attach their beliefs to me. 
you know, one of the sayings in the AA, uh, AA life is, and I think I've got it on an old card here that I love, and it's the Just For Today literature. Oh, no, actually, I actually haven't got it on this card. It's my old third step prayer card. Um, but it's Just For Today, I will believe in somebody who believes in me. And, and sometimes we need to attach ourselves to the hope that other people can hold for us. Now, in this, it's saying largely as we attach ourselves to those, those um, provisional beliefs, there's going to be some damage. And we've got to deal with this damage. It says here, using these provisional beliefs, you, you are ready to create a new order in your life. You begin with a damage control plan. plan. Most people uh, face problems and challenges as a result of their addictive behavior. Things like arrest, loss of career, severe relationship complications, disease, um, uh, for, for example, you know, the list may seem endless. Recovery teaches that it's important to get help and keep things simple. Break all the tasks down into small component parts and tackle them one at a time and one day at a time. And they go through that in here, in, in that in here with some of the literature, the worksheets of, of um, you know, okay, let's break this thing down piecemeal. One problem at a time. And, uh, you know, you're really looking and it says here that on the pages that follow, you'll find worksheets that allow you to think through each of the problems you've just listed. Um, you know, completing these worksheets will be a helpful start in your recovery because it's damage control. It's not fixing everything. It's just, it's just, you know, what's the problem? You know, for each problem you've got, what's the best possible outcome? What's the minimal acceptable outcome? What's the possible solutions? What's the best solution? What's the action steps to take towards it? And what's the support I need to put this in? place and a lot of people we've got to pick up some big pieces when we get clean so anyway that's provisional beliefs it's the damage control plan to get through it um, you'll find it in the literature of Patrick Carnes either in um, facing addiction facing the shadow I hope it's been useful please uh, donate to Movember if you can if not to my campaign but other people and friends that you